Because we got Collins Blazing Five as we head into the weekend. You love these. Five random <laughs> games. We never encourage gambling, just like no. give you a heads up. <laughs> okay, shall we get to it? Yep. We will begin with none other than the big game in the AFC East as the Jets host the Dolphins. To put it simply, these two teams, well, they hate each other. Tons of trash talking between the two. And the last time they met, both Darrell Revis and Reggie Bush got injured. The Jets won that game in overtime. New York is favored by two and a half. So, Colin, who you got? Well, I like the Dolphins, and here's why. Okay. First of all, it's going to be a low-scoring game. So anytime you have a low-scoring game with quarterbacks who are deemed average to below average, what do you like about the game is line play? I think both offensive and defensive lines favor the Miami Dolphins. I think there's a sense of revenge and urgency because even yeah. though they outplayed the Jets, they, they lost, lost. overtime. Yeah. And by the way, the Jets are an interesting team. I thought they played their best game of the year on the road. I thought they've played some of their worst games at home. So for me, I'm going to go with the better line play on two average offenses, a oh. little revenge. Toronto says he'll play more of Tebow, so you guys will have that to look forward to. Lomas? Well, I'm going to go with the Jets. Yeah. I, I'm going with the Jets because, oh. one, I think Tony Sperano, I think there's more pressure on him to get Tim Tebow more touches. Get creative with that offense. They got to find ways to get this guy involved in the offense a lot more. And then Reggie Bush. Mm -hmm. The whole war wars yeah. with Reggie Bush, Aaron him not Maven. apologizing mm -hmm. and everything. So the, I the think they're going to be having a little revenge on their minds, too. The Should Jets. be a low scoring football I game. 17 16, right, 21 20. Jets settled oh. Nation. Not by a lot. Next up, we got Detroit. The Lions host the Seahawks. It really is a must win for the Lions at 2-4, and four, and Matt Stafford is struggling. The Seahawks have played well this year, but are just 1-3 and three on the road. Detroit is a 2.5-point favorite. So, Colin, who you got here, buddy? Uh, I think Seattle's the better football team. Now, again, yeah! Matt Stafford right, you heard it. and Detroit have a great deal of talent. But yes. when Nate Burleson, their number two receiver, heard out for the year, mm -hmm. that means Calvin Johnson's the go-to receiver. Seattle's corners are the uh, best big. in the league. And big. Yes. Long and athletic. Mm -hmm. Couple that with an underachieving Detroit defensive line, which should allow Seattle to run the football and help Russell Wilson out and play action. I think I get the better football team. Now, it is a Seattle team that's much better at home. Right. right. But they beat Carolina on the road. They beat the Giants on the road. They are capable of winning road games. Yeah. Now, I do agree with you from this standpoint. They did take, teams are taking Calvin Johnson away from Matthew Stafford. That's his security blanket. And what he's not doing is just what you said. He's not finding Ryan Broyles, Ty this young. He's not finding his other receivers. So everybody knows he's going to Calvin. He's throwing interception. He's making bad decisions. Now, I'm thinking with a, when they get the running game going, it's going to settle that young man down. But what they got to do is spread the ball, and he has to use other receivers. He just can't keep concentrating on Calvin Johnson because teams are yeah, taking he only him had, away. Calvin Johnson only had three catches in that Monday night yeah, game. And they got really sloppy. They really have a week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was stretching. I was, I was stretching. You had to, it's your team, <laughs> yeah. it's your squad. The undefeated Falcons head to Philly to take on the Eagles. Both teams coming off a bye, and Andy Reid, you guys, has never lost after a bye. Atlanta might be undefeated, but they're a two-and-a-half-point underdog. How's this possible, yeah. Colin? We well, got. this is a tough game because Andy Reid's never lost on a bye, but you're facing an Atlanta team that is also coming off a bye. I am a believer in teams knowing what they are. Atlanta knows what they are. Mm -hmm. What worries me is that power teams can push them around a little. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia is not. They're struggling on the offensive line. Yeah. With uh, McCoy, Vic, it's a, it's a finesse team. It's a big play team. Right. They're okay with that. What they struggle with could be San Francisco, uh, a Chicago, or the Giants. Yeah. I have a quarterback that's making almost no mistakes. I have an offensive right. line and a quarterback yeah. making right. a ton. Five interceptions, right. eight fumbles. By the him. way, do you realize that they are, I think, six, five points away from being 0-6 or six points away? Yeah, five yeah. points yeah. away you from being 0-6. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going right here. Yeah. Now, I agree with you. Turnovers. They've been a problem for them, but they're fixable. They, it's concentrated. Are they, though? They really are. I mean, okay. Because to me, think about it. Last year, Michael Vick, same type of quarterback almost, 
He didn't have all these fumbles. He didn't have these turnovers. He needs to concentrate more. When you got that, what are you saying your to your if Michael Vick's your quarterback? Do you say something to him? Well, I know because he's already not, getting enough pressure okay. from the coaches, from the media. You don't want to add on to that, so you try to be his friend, pat him on the back, encourage okay. him more so than trying to get on him. But to me. The wide nine technique defense for the Eagles, they have to get pressure on Matty Ice. They know where he's going to be at. He's not the guy that's going to get out the pocket and move. So the they need to get on him and, like you said, get him it off the spot. It could be a long day for Vic, though, with John Abraham off the edge. He's yeah. a beast. Yeah. Ah! Thirty-four and still playing at a yeah. high level. Yeah. I mean, if people thought he would, you know, kind of peel off. And last win, well, it came in the month of September. They've lost two straight and had a bye in last week as they head to Cleveland. The Browns have had the worst record in the NFL at one and six, and our three-point underdog, Colin, who you got in this one, buddy? Well, I don't think I've ever done this in the history of Chargers! me. <laughs> I'm going to take Cleveland. Whoa! Whoa! Now here's why: wow. is that Again, Phillip Rivers, who's not what he was three years ago, it's a bad offensive line. Under pressure, Phillip Rivers, dealing with new receivers who he's not really gelling with yet, has struggled with turnovers. Cleveland offensive line is young, but pretty good. Mm -hmm. They also have the best corners, I think, in the league. Really? They lead the AFC in interceptions. So you have, a sh you have a quarterback struggling with young receivers, a tremendous secondary. Mm -hmm. For Cleveland, they've been in virtually all but one game this year. They've mm -hmm. lost tough games. This is kind of a game where they can spoil their season. You're getting to the halfway mark. They're healthy outside of Trent Richardson. I like the Browns to win this game tight. Yeah. You, you do too? No, no. I'm oh. going opposite. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say. But I'm going because of what Colin is saying, and you're right. Phillip Rivers, he's struggling. So what do you do when you got a quarterback struggling? You have to run the ball more. They invested the first-round pick in Ryan Matthews, and I know because of injuries and everything, he just hadn't produced. It's time for him to produce. He produces. It takes it takes pressure off of Phillip, those young receivers. And then why aren't you going to your tight end? You yeah. have an all-pro, all-world tight end. Don't look at those receivers. Go to the big guy that you relied on for all these years. Hopefully, they'll get this through their mind and get it together. Before and if not, they do now. Hopefully, they're watching. <laughs> Much like the Lions. Very talented, but a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing every year with. Are we always having that discussion? Next up, huge showdown in Dallas between the Cowboys and the Giants on Sunday. All the talk this week has been about the injury to Sean Lee. John Clayton says DeMarco Murray will likely be out as well. And the Giants have been rolling lately, winning three straight. New York is favored by one and a half on the road. Colin, who you got here? I'm going to take the Giants. There's three key injuries to the Dallas Cowboys. There's two or three positions that you have to be good at if you're going to beat the Giants. One center. Because you're going to get a real right. pass rush. Who's calling audible? That's Phil right. Costa's hurt. Right. You better be good in the middle of that defense. Mm -hmm. Because, again, you're talking Victor Cruz, a veteran quarterback, Hakeem Nix. Who's calling the signal? Sean Lee is out. Mm -hmm. You also need, because of their pass rush, to establish a running game. DeMarco Murray is out. So they're out their best back, their best linebacker, uh, their center, the guy calling the shots on the offensive line. By the way, I would argue Dallas, the last seven times... The Giants have been road underdogs. Mm -hmm. They've won all seven. They play well on the, the road. The best road team yeah. maybe yes. ever in big games in the National Football League, New yes. York Giants. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going with you, Colin. No yeah, way! Yeah, I got to go with the man now. Yeah. And the thing, the one thing I love about the Giants, that moniker, next man up. Mm -hmm. So it don't matter. It don't matter. And, and the thing in football, Carissa, we, they said the, the first 22, you know what you're going to get out of your first 22 starters. It's the guys mm -hmm. that come in off the bench. So so to me, they got that next man moniker. Up. Have you have you done. ever been on a team that plays better on the road? No. No, you always. Oh, yeah. I wonder. I wonder why that is. There's not New England under Belichick's been pretty good on the road, but it's you know it's it's, it's Pittsburgh historically has been pretty good on the road. Good job on that.